All right, welcome back. This is the week you missed. This would have been a great week to miss because there wasn't too much that I can think of that went well. Uh, we are going to start off with something I think a little light, although it might not be too light for this Broken Taylor fan. Uh, <laughs> you want to let us know what happened, Broken Taylor fan, this week? Um, well, it shouldn't come as a shock to anyone because it's been covered on, I think, every news outlet, possibly globally. Um, Ticketmaster sure. totally botched the Taylor Swift era's tour sales from pre-sale all the way through to canceling the general sale. Um, so there's a lot of there's a lot of very angry Swifties in the world. Um, so why why do you think it happened, or or do you know what happened that made this go so badly? So Ticketmaster released a statement that they very quickly took down, saying that three and a half million <laughs> people signed up for the verified fan presale. Um, they gave one and a half million codes out of that three and a half million and let everybody sit in line to try to buy tickets on Tuesday morning. Um, and it just, it, the math just doesn't add up. Um, fans have crunched numbers saying that there's somewhere around 2.8 million total tickets available for this slightly abbreviated tour. Um, and Taylor apparently shattered some ticket sale records on Tuesday with 2 million total sales in one day. And that does not yeah. leave a lot of tickets left over for the rest of us. So I, I got a couple questions. One, what happened to this recession that everyone's talking about? Because those tickets were fucking expensive. <laughs> and it doesn't look like anyone's too concerned about how much money they were. Uh, I don't know. Like, I didn't know there was that many wealthy people who could just afford a $300 ticket is probably like uh, between a $500 to $1,000 a night when you're thinking of Ubers, food pre-gaming, whatever it might be. Um, that was like kind of surprising to me that there's that many people who have that much money for a night out. That was a little surprising. Another surprising thing, I think Todd is going to like this one. I hmm. agree with AOC because she actually, uh. she commented on this and she's actually commented on this uh, a few times. This isn't just like um, her trying to be relevant with uh, the current events, but She's mentioned a few times that the Ticketmaster Live Nation um, merger of like uh, five, 10 years ago, whenever that was, was unfair for the industry and made them just have a monopoly on everything. And I believe that's related to this a bit, right, Sydney? Or Yeah, definitely. Um, one of the big issues that Ticketmaster seems to be denying now, um, but a lot of the fans are are speaking out about pretty angrily, I suppose, is that Taylor was locked in to only being able to sell through Ticketmaster, but then another huge issue are all of the resellers are also mm -hmm. like pretty much owned by Ticketmaster. So Ticketmaster doesn't really care who's buying tickets or when, it's all just more money for them. So unfortunately, like the only real people who are kind of coming short here are the Taylor Swift fans. Yeah. It, so, go ahead, Todd. No, 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 I was going to say, yeah. like, are, are we really just, you're just, you're both just going to sit here and just talk about how Ticketmaster is the asshole when the obvious <laughs> asshole is Taylor Swift? It, what, how is we it, can get to that. <laughs> how is it Taylor Swift, Todd? Huh? Oh, she, she got locked in to only selling through Ticketmaster? How'd that happen? I mean, huh? I think it's... Oh, it's, I, I bet it's because they put a gigantic bag of money in front of her and said, hey... That's you part of it, but, but think about this. Just think about this to play a little devil's advocate is like, um, if you're an artist, your goal is to be in front of as many fans as possible. Like you want, a lot of times I think you want to be in front of your fans. You want to have a night with them. It's uh, it's fun for both the artists and the fans. So in order to see as many fans as possible, you're going to want to be in as big venues as possible, in as many big venues as possible. How do you get that? Unfortunately, most of the venues are owned by Live Nation or they're yep. owned by these agencies that book. And a lot of them will say, hey, you can't book Wells Fargo Center unless you're going through Live Nation. You can't book Yankee Stadium unless you're going through Live Nation. And then when you go to Live Nation, Live Nation says, hey, we have a one time deal. You will give you one hundred million dollars and we'll throw you in these 50 venues but everything is kind of uh, on us. And it's a, it's an issue I honestly have seen in like a lot of concerts. Um, I think 
during COVID, I kind of didn't go to concerts or no one did. Before COVID, I went sober for a year and I kind of um, didn't go to concerts because it was too difficult for me. But um, when I went back to concerts last year, I feel like it it changed a lot and my eyes were open how like I went to uh, the pavilion in Philadelphia and the entire venue was owned by TD Bank. And you went to go get hot dogs. The hot dogs were owned by TD Bank. It was just a, a hot dog stand. You went to go get beer and it was all one beer venue owned by TD Bank. And there was no uh, choices, no diversity. It was all just one company. And I feel like the same thing happens with these uh, with these large concerts is like the booking agency, the venue, the ticket distributor, all of it is one company. Um, and you kind of, if you want to play in 50 venues, you kind of have to buy into their package. So like, yeah, Taylor could have said, no, I don't want to play um, for Ticketmaster, but then she probably wouldn't be able to play in any of these venues and she'd have to figure it out her own. You, know, uh, you follow what I'm saying a little bit? I do. So Way number two, that Taylor's an asshole. Uh -oh. when, when selling tickets through Ticketmaster, artists have an option that they can make it so that they can only be resold through Ticketmaster. And here's the key part, they can only be sold at face value or below. That is a setting that Ticketmaster can put in place that artists have asked for and people have used. Now, what does that do? It basically cripples the resale market. Like if you're a scalper, you're not going to buy tickets if you can only resell them for what you paid for them, right? Mm. Okay, so why didn't Team Taylor choose that option? Seems easy enough. Oh, let me guess. My guess is you probably don't get as much of a cut or you get a little bit less money if you do that because Ticketmaster knows they're not going to get as many resales, which means not as many fees. So again, mm. like, look, let's be real. No one likes Ticketmaster. Fucking hate Ticketmaster. But this idea that like it's Ticketmaster and that Taylor Swift and her team didn't make a series of choices that led to this also happening, it's ridiculous. They're both to blame. And if anything, like the fact that her fans are just not, I mean, I, I was looking at Reddit threads and there are some people that are sort of calling around me like it didn't have to be this way, but like they're a minority. And it's like, I think everyone just like worships the ground she walks on and is just such just, a sycophantic, disgusting <laughs> fan base of people that will not hold their idol critically to account. Looking at you, Broken Taylor fan. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you respond first, uh, Broken Taylor fan. Shots fired. <laughs> no, you're right. There certainly is this, I wouldn't even say that it's an unspoken rule within the community of Swifties that Taylor Swift can do no wrong and we love her and up until I would say this week, the general assumption was that she loved us back. And that everything she did was to make our experience more fun, was to entertain us more. Um, and now we're kind of left holding nothing and going like, where is Taylor and why isn't she saying anything? And why isn't she making this right for us? And of course, I'm sure there was something in that contract with Ticketmaster that limits her from speaking publicly about the absolute shit show that it was. Um, but yeah, you're not going to see a lot of Swifties speaking out publicly on Reddit, asking these questions, because that's just not how we do things in this community. We love each other. You should know this, Todd. You've been banned from the Taylor Swift subreddit for saying uh, shit. No I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious. So, yeah, there was, there was some think, nerd. Or go on. Do you think, uh, the, so what's going to happen with this tour? Is it going to go as planned? Do you think any changes will happen to Ticketmaster? or Live Nation moving forward. Will Taylor get the uh, slack that she deserves according to Todd or um, will more news come out that shows like maybe she's not at fault, maybe there's something else that kind of held her restricted? Uh, I don't think the media is like all that concerned with kind of clearing Taylor Swift. I think it's pretty clear that she does not necessarily have them on her side. Um, I think as far as this tour is concerned, this is kind of, this is what it is. Like we have the option to pay extremely inflated prices through the resellers now. Um, I think that's the option a lot of fans are going to get, get stuck with. I'm certainly still going to do it. I will go to this tour. Um, oh, you're, you're, you're definitely going? Oh yeah, I'm going. Um, <laughs> of course, just because there was a kink in my ticket purchasing plan that was meticulously 
planned out in advance doesn't mean I'm not going to go. But right. I think moving forward, this is something that we probably will see our lawmakers examining because apparently this is not an issue that is unique to Taylor Swift fans. We have found out that Fish fans have been dealing with this for years and years. Apparently yeah. Foo Fighters fans have had similar issues. Um, and I saw Tyler Childers had a ticket sale this week as well that had people waiting in a 2000 plus line and then coming up short at the end of it. So this isn't unique to Swifties. Mm -hmm. Hopefully something changes. It well, here's the thing. They they lost the the chance to deal with this was give AOC props was yeah. to block that merger before it happened. Yeah. It's done. It's yeah. already been blessed. I mean, look, I'm not a lawyer, I'm not a legal expert, but my assumption would be like when big companies merge, they basically have to be approved by some government body that says like this is not going to be monopolistic or whatever. Like mergers can be blocked by the government. If it's not like, I don't think there's take backs on that. Like, it's, yeah. it, it would be much easier to have stopped the merger from happening than it will be to try to force Ticketmaster to do anything. And also, here's the other thing. This is a nothing issue. This is a nothing burger. People are talking more about this than the F, F, or FTX blow up, which literally just saw like, what, $40 billion basically vanish into thin air. Like... Yeah. I think it's That's all kind of it's all kind of related. I think it's uh it's corruption and people just turning a blind eye because of greed and wanting more money. Um, it's kind of related in my uh, opinion. But one last thing I wanted to mention, and then let's definitely talk about FTX because that shit was wild. But um, something I do think will uh will help this, and something I've been a fan of for the last like year or two, and been trying to promote. I don't think we're there yet, but I think we are soon. Is virtual concerts where I think there's a huge market for Taylor Swift, a lot of potential money to be made, as well as a lot of opportunities for fans who never got to go to a concert to actually like experience one. But virtual reality, I think, is going to be huge, where imagine if everyone had the opportunity to visit the concert virtually if they didn't get to go to it physically. Um, that would be awesome. It might not be good enough for a lot of people, but at least it's something. And I think that's um, a cool option that will be here hopefully sooner rather than later. And I think that will um, maybe make this uh, not as bad a problem, but eh, let's change it up. Well, let's hold go. on, uh, before we do that, that's another thing. So another question, Sydney and, and Taylor's last tour, did she like, did she do a, like a, like a live stream, like pay-per-view that people could pay to watch the show for any of the concerts? Not that I can remember. No, I'm, and pre she didn't I'm pretty do something sure she like, did not. She didn't do something where they like broadcast it inside movie theaters and you could go and watch on like a big screen, big sound system, all that. I don't I don't think for reputation there was any kind of like post tour like release for previous tours. There was like a documentary or like uh, I know no, 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 there no, was, no. this I think is it... like they, they there's a service where they will live stream a concert into a movie theater so you can go yeah. and watch the concert on like a gigantic screen with an amazing sound system and get the full yeah. experience it's no i'm pretty sure no done. okay <laughs> so again so two two <laughs> common practices that other bands do to let more of their fans see their show that swift nation is apparently too good for or too dumb to figure out how to do i mean it, that's just leaving money on the table because, Todd, look, there's a lot of Todd, there's, there's things of, that you don't know that go into Taylor's decision making, and I'm sure and it's Taylor that. Nation, right, but, not Swift Nation. <laughs> whatever. But right, let's talk. So, yeah. someone who is more uniformly hated by the entire world, I think Swift is at least loved by half the world, and then the other half maybe whatever. But Sam Bankman Fried just destroyed so many people's lives this week. Uh, pretty remarkable. I don't even know where to begin with this. Sounded like it was fraud from the beginning. So basically, a little backstory in case you don't know. This guy, Sam Bankman-Fried, started a crypto exchange in, I think, 2017, 2018. His mom has a super PAC for the Democratic uh, Party. He basically instantly rose to fame as this, like, prodigy in the crypto world. He was actually the link between the financial markets, like the legit ones on Wall Street, and the crypto markets. He was supposed to be the bridge that kind of brought them together. There's billions of dollars being invested in him by Goldman Sachs, by uh, all these big banks, by crypto, um, by crypto companies, everything. And then 
all of a sudden, uh, basically, he was doing shady things this whole time, but no one really knew. There's another exchange called Binance that basically seemed to realize, hey, something seems a little shady about this balance sheet. I don't know what's going on here. They tweeted some messages out. I think they knew exactly what they were doing when they tweeted the messages out saying, hey, be careful with FTX. When they did it, people started taking liquidity off the exchange. As that happened, the problem looked worse and worse, and then it kind of blew up. It seems like this guy was inflating his own token price. How do you do that? You buy your own token for $5 when it's really only worth four. All of a sudden, your market cap inflates. Then you buy it for $6 instead of five. It inflates. It looks like it's worth a lot more. Now you have a market cap of $10 billion. You take a loan on that market cap that's completely inflated. And now you have a bunch of money that you can do whatever with. That's essentially what he was doing. Turns out he was living in Bahamas with 10 people. They're all dating each other. They're all like interviews are coming out. They all sound uh, idiots and like they had no idea what they're doing. They're just playing with people's money. It doesn't sound like he's too remorseful at all. He's had an interview come out on Twitter uh, two days ago that just came out like uh, he doesn't care and he didn't learn his lesson. I don't know where to begin with this. Uh, so let's hear what so, you think at first, Todd. I want so first I chatted a link. Sydney, do you, I, are you have you seen pictures of these people or <laughs> um click, I, Sydney, click, the, click only, the link in the chat? I clicked the link. I saw a photo you of the see girl. That little goober a, of a girl. She looks I like a troll. A she looks like Schmeagel. <laughs> no, the best like, the best take that I have seen so far is that how can someone look like a baby and an old Russian grandmother at the same time? That is accurate. Do this you know? So that is the one we're talking about. <laughs> and she's actually, she's, don't laugh at looks, but uh, she's related to uh, the SEC, like chairman, I believe, um, somehow. And like his advisor was a professor from MIT who's friends with the head of the SEC, who's like her dad. There's a lot of like very shady connections going on, connected to the Democratic National Convention, connected to super PACs. He was the second biggest donor of Democrats like in history after um, Soros, which is just kind of wild that this 28 year old was able to donate so much. Um, but yeah, that that is her. Um, I, I don't want to be too inappropriate, but I wouldn't risk my life for uh, for her. <laughs> 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 um maybe she so, has a great personality i thought you were gonna say pussy at first but maybe a personality <laughs> <laughs> uh, that um, too i would imagine. so we're also we're also beating around the proverbial bush here because it is so jeremy i think you sort of mentioned this but these like the 10 people that were running ftx all lived in this penthouse in the bahamas and they were all basically fucking each other yeah they were a giant and then they fucked people. five million people at the same time yeah <laughs> and the, the other fun fun rumors going around is that there is apparently a sex tape that might be dropping soon, which is just... Yeah. I, mean, I don't want to watch that. As makes, gross as it is, I will definitely watch it. Yeah, don't care. I, mean, you, like, I need to see these <laughs> ugly nerds fucking. Sydney, you're not going to have a choice to watch it because like, it's going to be... I'm not watching that. It's going to be plastered <laughs> everywhere. There's actually... um. Did you see the art of... um? Sam Bankman freed like uh as a cartoon just fucking everyone in his office. No. <laughs> All right, let me try and find that one in a little bit. But um, but here, let's hear what do you guys think is the fallout from this? Uh, do you think one, he's gonna get in trouble? Do you think two, crypto is done for a while? Do you think it's gonna come back? When I think there'll be another bull market in two, three years, do you think that there's gonna be another scam fraud that comes the next cycle because there was another one last cycle seems like it's pretty um common thing to happen each cycle what do you guys think is like the fallout from this i mean i think it's just wild that everyone's like oh this is the death of crypto this is like do we not remember bernie madoff or enron or the 2008 financial collapse like no one was like is this the end of the stock market does this mean that like no yeah, like exactly. look the the underlying value of the idea of cryptocurrency is still valuable, whether or not it picks up or expands or whatever, who knows. But this idea that because there was one shady person who did shitty things, that it's going to completely destroy this this emerging technology. No, it's horseshit. Um, well, and also, like, 
crypto is about being decentralized. The whole problem with this is it was a centralized exchange. It, exactly. it doesn't affect crypto. It affects centralized exchanges. When you have someone in control of everyone else, that's the problem. But when it's decentralized, not so much. Um, Sydney, what do you think? I, um, I'm not sure if you're too into crypto, but do you have any thoughts on any of this? Um, I'm not too into crypto. I truly, at its core, I, I don't really understand it. But I think that essentially <laughs> is why it's not going to go away. Because I think in general, we haven't yet discovered like the full possibility that crypto is going to provide to us. Also, though, do you think it sounds any different from regular financial markets? Because like, um, here's what's like kind of crazy to me. And I, I'm not the best at like uh, talking, but in my head, it makes a lot of sense. But like, <laughs> Um, what just happened w would easily happen to any bank if they were if there was a little bit of manipulation and there wasn't um, FDIC protections. But basically, what happened is they were investing all of the money they were given, which isn't cool and isn't right. But they were basically taking this money, not expecting everyone to want the money at the same time. So they were like using the money that they are being given to try and create more money. That's what banks essentially do. If any of this happened to a real bank like PNC, Bank of America, JP Morgan, whatever, it would be just as big a problem, if not worse. I believe um, beforehand, the, the amount that banks have to have in reserve is 10%. So if they have a million dollars out uh, on outlay, whatever, they only have to have 100,000. In 2020, that was actually scrapped and they don't have to have any reserves. So if you go to the bank, it's not guaranteed that they have the money that you want out. If everyone at my local PNC went right now and said, I want my deposits uh, to be withdrawn, they would have a run on the bank and they wouldn't have it all. So like everyone is like, oh, Sam Bankman free. This is horrible. This shows that crypto sucks, whatever. <laughs> it would happen to banks too. It just, um, it just hasn't. But it's like essentially the same thing that banks do. They just were able to get away with it because they had no regulation. Um, does that make sense at all? I don't know. I, I kind of uh, not the best at explaining it, but I don't see why people don't see that this isn't the same as what banks are. It's just not yeah. as protected. Well, it's not even necessarily. So two things on that. One, the first thing you described, it's there's a little bit different in what a bank does and what a Ponzi scheme is, which is what which is what this guy was a running little, with Bernie Madoff. A little it's different. a little bit different. A, a little. But, so he wasn't he was um, investing your money, which like he should and kind of gambling it a little bit more. But what banks do is almost that they're like, they're not taking your money and gambling it, but they're taking it and using it to create more. It's uh, it's pretty similar. Yes. So <laughs> the, I've been, I've been doing a little bit of a deep dive on Caroline, the, uh, the, the weirdo. <laughs> so here's, she apparently had a Tumblr and this was one of the things she posted on her Tumblr and her, and her her Tumblr ID or name was called World Optimization, which is interesting. But so listen to this. When I first started my foray into poly, I thought of it as a radical break from my trad past. But to be honest, I've come to decide the only acceptable style of poly is best characterized as something like imperial Chinese harem. None of this non-hierarchical bullshit. Everyone should have a ranking of their partners. People should know where they fall on the ranking and there should be vicious power struggles for higher ranks. Yeah, that's crazy. That's, Although Sydney, it sounds like someone that you could probably have some fun talking to because I feel like deep down you and her maybe have some agreement on things. That that sounds wild, but get this. So, um, I've been like uh, definitely fascinated by this all week because there's every day more comes out. I literally just got a text message from someone I've been kind of um, messaging all week. Like, yo, did you hear that? This is crazy. So supposedly after this all happened and FTX started going down, um, I believe there's like $8 billion that they owe to uh, depositors, investors, clients, whatever, maybe even $10 billion. At the end, there's still some funds in FTX. They got hacked and all of the funds got wiped from the, um, from the exchange and people were like, that's shady. That's obviously like the employees trying to save whatever. It seems like it just came out that it looks like there's news that the hack was Sam Bankman Freed trying to steal any money left on behalf of the Bahamian government. Um, <laughs> so that could it's be wild. So Who knows if that's him trying to protect himself from getting arrested. 
There's other people who say the only reason he hasn't been arrested yet is because a lot of the money he was taking was going to the Democrat Party um, and they want to protect him because they were happy with that money. But uh, I think that's just an interesting part of all of this is there's a lot of fraud, but there's also a lot of connections to like big players in the world. Um, and that's just interesting to see how, it, how that all plays out. We probably won't ever hear what actually uh, was going on. We'll get like a little surface level of it. But no, look, let, 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 let's be real. Here's what's going to happen. This guy is going to kill himself by shooting himself like 17 times in the face. <laughs> like, he's like he's going to have the most unrealistic suicide of all suicides and just disappear. And then we're never going to talk about it again. That wouldn't be the worst thing. You know what? Uh, we'll end it on this because uh, I don't want to talk too much on this. It was not a good week for a Jew to be in the news uh, for something like this. <laughs> like that. Uh, I don't know. That's like as a Jew. As a Jew, that's like what I'm I'm pretty sure a lot of other Jews were thinking, like, dude, of all the weeks, like you could have done something. Come on, man. Yeah, like this, was, this wasn't it. And or maybe your name could have been a little different, but um, but like everyone is uh, is kind of similar things with this guy. Unfortunately, right. I'm not so. laughing. <laughs> no, yeah. Have, I'm not I laughing another... either. I'm like, I'm just like this, uh, this <laughs> but, Look, I got a, I got another gem from um Miss World Optimizations uh, Tumblr. Listen to that. So here's some things that she finds. Here's some things that she. Here's some things that she finds attractive, or like what she calls cute boy things. Controlling most major world governments, being responsible for many important inventions and scientific discoveries, spatial reasoning abilities, low risk aversion, sufficient strength to physically overpower you. <laughs> The, I mean, and given that she's, you know, the tiny little goblin that she is, I assume that that's everyone. Like most people over the age of seven could physically overpower her. So, but all right, this this this, this uh, is episode wild. is definitely not PG. I didn't find the cartoon that I'm uh, that I was looking for, but this one will be just as good. Um, are you gonna are you gonna show us something? This is gonna this is gonna be. <laughs> <laughs> The, the memes that have come out of this have been incredible. <laughs> That's all I'll say. <laughs> um, um, I think she sounds like a good candidate to have a baby with Elon Musk. Yeah, uh, dude, Elon oh, probably already does have a baby with her. What, let's let's actually close on that for two minutes. Twitter, is it going to be saved? Is it going to be bigger in a year? Because it looks like it's not going the right way right now. Um, um, I think Twitter is in its Graham Greene process, which is creation via destruction. I like yep. it. Yeah, no, I think this this idea that everyone's like, oh my God, Twitter's, it's going to implode. Like literally, apparently like yesterday, like Elon sent out this email that had a 5 p.m. deadline Pacific time that was like, it sent out to the re remaining employees that said, you know, we are entering a ca case of like hardcore engineering work in like, if you are going to commit to this, click this link. Yes, if yeah. you don't click it by 5 p.m., you'll get three months severance and you're gone. And apparently most of the remaining staff chose to not move forward. And so now he's potentially down to about 20, like 10 to 20% of the original Twitter staffing levels as when he took over. Um, and people online were freaking out and saying, oh, this is going to fail. And like, here's my thing. I don't like, I don't know if Twitter is going to be like a booming success and make Elon Musk a lot of money. I don't think it's going to like, implode and die though because here's the thing all these people that are talking shit on elon and all these people that lived on twitter for the past 10 years they're addicted yeah like they're gonna stay away for a period of time they will never leave they will it, be back because it, it's where you go it's <laughs> it is like congregate. it's kind of an important part of the internet like um when i was fascinated by sam bangman fried all week where did i go for like the most up-to-date information is twitter like there's um there's some things that it doesn't really have good competition with if you want like to the source news. But um, I don't know. I just don't know if I believe all of the news about it because everyone says like that they're getting rocked, that this is failing, this is failing. I just don't know if I believe it. I think a lot of companies just don't like Twitter um, and are trying to sabotage it without even really knowing. But um, I'm not convinced that they're like completely screwed 
uh, yeah, like I think there's a headline today that said like Twitter is doomed. Um, no, I think traditional media <laughs> wants Twitter to be doomed, but I don't think they're uh, actually doomed. Um, no, I, that's, yeah. that's it for the week we missed. That was a great week. I wish we missed because I, I don't know too many, I don't know any good news that happened this week, only just insanity. But it's only going to get wild because some guy in Florida, I heard, just started uh, campaigning for president. So um, <laughs> that's just going to be wild. We got a good two years ahead of us. Um, I don't even know. We got a lot of content, oh. um, a lot of easy content to make, though, that's for sure. But thank you, Broken Taylor fan. I hope you're doing OK with your uh, <laughs> trauma that you experienced. I will be in touch with you. I'm still trying to get tickets. Uh, I don't know how, but hopefully we can figure it out. And Todd, fuck you for talking shit on Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> Later.